Hello, and welcome to the Her Hoop Stats podcast. I'm Gabe Ibrahim, and we hope you are enjoying this podcast on a podcast app on which you subscribe to the feed or on YouTube where you subscribe to our channel because we are talking about WNBA free agency from now until like the end of free agency, which should be in like a month. In order to do that, I'm talking to Sabrina Merchant, SB Nation writer for basketball. She does the Clippers, but more importantly for us, she does the Sparks. So we're going to talk a little bit about Sparks and just everything that's happening in WNBA free agency. So Sabrina, how are you doing today? I'm a little bored. I got to be honest. <laughs> uh, when you invited me to come on the podcast, I expected us to have lots of big news to talk about. And I mean, what are we waiting for? <laughs> uh, you, it's funny because I remember when we, when I, we talked about this like two weeks ago, maybe. And I was like, well, by then Phoenix will have a head coach. Surely. <laughs> At the very least, we'll be able to talk about Phoenix's new head coach. Of course, the Phoenix Mercury have not hired a new head coach. Um, I, this is someone on you as their mock GM, mock off-season GM uh, for not hiring a coach. Would you like to issue a statement to, to clarify what's happening? That's probably why I didn't do anything during the mock off-season. I wanted to hire the coach first <laughs> and then address all of the personnel issues. Yeah, uh, I would think the Mercury would like to do that too, but yet we still do not have a head coach. Think uh, Penny Taylor do it someone's doing it someone's doing it they released Megan Walker which is something we can talk about uh but that's I don't I don't know who's there rumors are is that it's Stephanie White uh Shams reported that Teresa Willerspoon's out of the picture which is interesting um, I mean as a Clippers writer I'm totally on board with Natalie Nakase who's a G League Clippers head coach or coach not head coach sorry yeah she so all right I, we, I didn't want to go here first, but let's go here first. Is she, who is she? I haven't, I didn't know much about her until yeah. I saw her name in the, in the report about. So she's a Southern California native, uh, played basketball here, went to UC Irvine. Um, she did like a bunch of coaching clinics camps and ended up, uh, you know, latching on with the Clippers, like first with summer league. And then uh, as an assistant coach, she did player development. It's funny because she did a lot of player development for the bigs. And if you don't know who Natalie Nicasse is, she's about five foot two. Yes. So seeing her work with like Boban is just delightful on <laughs> so many levels. Um, yeah, so she's had a lot of opportunities in the organization. She was on like the NBA staff. She's been on the G League staff the last two years um, in the bubble, the G League bubble last year. Okay. A lot of players who weren't necessarily assigned to the Clippers because like not everybody had a team there mm -hmm. uh, just had rave reviews about her and like how good she was at explaining things and getting on their level. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan. She's like really easy to talk to, super sharp. Um, I recommend a profile by Melissa Rowan on Fox Sports oh, about okay. her. We'll link to that. But yeah, I, I think she's whip smart and the Clippers have like nothing but good things to say about her, uh, which they usually make fun of all their assistants. But <laughs> <laughs> No, and that that's interesting. Like I, I never heard about her. And the only reason, like I saw her name on the report, I kind of like shot away from that was because she's she hasn't been a head coach and i'm just really in on the mercury just getting someone to coach you know the m the WNBA finals participant phoenix mercury so to to keep the ship kind of going but it would be interesting for them to go younger and invest in someone that has more um i guess more upside because we, we just don't know who she is as a head coach yet yeah i uh I misspoke real quick. She had a scholarship at UC Irvine. She ended up going to UCLA. So right. even more Southern California, you know, <laughs> stuff for Natalie. Yeah. And she, she was at UCLA a long time ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's like 40. So just do the math backwards, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. So that's a, that's an interesting name that I, I, we had talked about her on court side um, a couple weeks ago when we, when that first report came out. So it'd be interesting to see where Phoenix goes obviously they still need a head coach i think in theory <laughs> i th so how like diane tarasi being head coach i'm not sure that would work it would be really fun though and they should do that if anyone in phoenix is listening yeah i don't know that diana wants to waste her last year like that <laughs> <laughs> claire coach she i mean she'll essentially coach the team to a certain extent right like that's what that's what diana does I guess. I don't know. I don't know how much she, she, she involves herself in all that. I would imagine Sandy exercised a lot of influence as coach last year. So oh, yeah. or last eight years, you know, but if you bring in someone who's a rookie, then presumably Diana would have significantly more influence, but that's why Stephanie White's a little more interesting because she's not a rookie, right? She's got that experience with 
the sky as an assistant, right? Coaching the fever, she went yeah. to finals with the fever. Like, and she was most recently a Vanderbilt. Um, and she's on our TV screens all the time, which would be nice because then we have like some some ways to figure out what she's gonna do as a coach now. Um, but she was at she was at Vanderbilt until last year, so she's still she's still deep in the game. So it's not like it's it's not like she hasn't been around. It's just she's been on TV for like the last year. Um, so I think that'd be a good hire. I mean, Phoenix in terms of an off season is not as interesting as one would hope, as you found out in the mock yeah. off season, because <laughs> uh, they don't they don't have much to do. That as I mentioned though, they've waived Megan Walker to make space for a qualifying offer for Kia Nurse. That's all fine and good if you don't think Megan Walker is a part of your future. However, I like. I don't think there's a way they can keep nurse on this roster. If she's going to be out for the entire year, she tore right. her ACL and what was that? The, the semifinals, right? Yeah. Game four of the semifinals, game four of the semifinals, she tears her ACL. So she's probably not going to be back next year. And they have had, they, they kept Bria Hartley on the roster the season before that um, or last season, excuse me, with that injury, but they were paying her a lot more money. So I'm not, ju- I'm just not sure how they can keep Kia nurse on this roster and still fill it out. And keep Kia Vaughn as well. Yeah, my my move during the mock off season was to wave Kia Vaughn instead of Megan Walker because one, she's making more mm-hmm. money, and two, it just seems like when you have Brittany Griner and Brianna Turner, it's more used to have a wing in addition to that instead of another big. One would but, think. Hey. <laughs> uh, and and the thing is too though, like they still need to. I mean, they still will probably have to wave her if they want to do almost anything. If like if. Sophie Cunningham gets above the max. Mid. They're going to probably have to restructure Kia Vaughn's contract. Now here's the theory I have. And, and let me know if this is like, if this is not something a WNBA team would do because it's a little uh, skeezy, I'd say is like they're holding on to Kia Vaughn now mm-hmm. in order to let free agency play out a little bit. And then they're going to try to sign someone. And if it works, they'll try to, you know, release Kia Vaughn and re-sign her to a, a lesser contract. I'm not sure if they would or could do that. So didn't Phoenix do that with somebody else like not too long ago and that player got really offended by it? Was that January? Oh, maybe. Maybe it uh, was. I don't remember. I don't remember this. We need to talk. We need to, I need to ask Richard about this actually. Yeah. So I remember Phoenix waving someone, bringing them back at a lower number, um, like late in free agency, and then them immediately leaving the next off season. But I mean, if it's only a one-year window, then you can afford to alienate as many people as you want. But I just, the key nurse thing is so fascinating to me because like at, at the same time that it is a one-year window, I thought she was so good in the playoffs yeah. last year that she's exactly the kind of player you want for Skylar and Brittany Griner later on, you know, once Tarazi retires. And again, I, I don't particularly understand the cap mechanics of how they could handle key nurse this year. Like, could they ask her to sit out a year for personal reasons? I don't know. Would that be against the WNBA CBA? Probably. But um, I, if there is a wink, wink understanding to be had, I find it far more compelling in the Kia Nurse direction than the Kia Von direction. Yeah, I don't. I remember um, there was a situation last year where someone at someone signed someone who was injured, and they ended up having to pay because they can, they knew about the injury when they signed. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that went through or or how that happened but yeah I don't I don't know I don't know if she if she decides to sit out a la Alicia Clark last year who signed then got hurt and then Mm -hmm. was suspended for the full season yet still hung out with the team um I think that'd be beneficial to them I just absolutely I don't know if they can get that salary cap relief because right the, now the injury was sustained during the WNBA season, not during international commitments. Exactly. So it's on them at that point. And they knew about it before signing the contract too. So there's debt. I think it would definitely count against the cap if they were to sign her. Now, the interesting part of it would be if they kind of use this time to say, Hey, we're going to take care of you this year, but you're going to take care of us next year. So we're signing a two year deal, you know, at lower than your market value to mm-hmm. allow you to rehab this year and still be with our team in 2023 issue is 2023. The only player on the salary cap sheet for the Mercury is Skylar Dickens Smith. So cop feels like next year could, it, at least from a contract perspective could be the last year. So I'm not sure they want to use that on Kia nurse. Yeah. It's tricky. Um, she could also just personally decide like, 
not to take the qualifying offer <laughs> and yeah. just suspend herself for a season under the understanding that Phoenix will take care of her afterwards. But it's, it's so tricky with a hard cap. My goodness. Like the mechanics that you have to go through. Yeah, I know. We need, we need some, we need some salary cap relief, just like the, yeah. pre- the, bu- the pressure in the bubble for the salary cap is too much. Like we need something to just let teams go a little bit above or a little bit below and in the off season, because you can do it during the season. Um, I think Chicago and Phoenix did that. They both went over the cap last year, mm-hmm. but it's like with COVID and you have to bring in a bunch of new players. Like you need just a little bit more space in the off season. I'm all for roster expansion. That doesn't seem like it's going to be happening anytime soon. Yeah. You need a salary cap bump if you're going to get roster expansion too. And, and maybe it could happen. I don't know. I don't know what the chain of events is because this salary cap is expiring in 2027. So it seems like no one's going to have any sort of um, reason to change it. But I, I just think we're getting to a point where it's like next year, I'm not sure who has cap space enough to pay all these players that we want in the league. Right. Because the the max jumped so much more than the actual salary cap did. Yes. Percentage wise. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, ju- it jumped up and there's no, I guess there wouldn't be any cap smoothing, but <laughs> they in, in both the NBA and the WNBA, they're just like, ah. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. (laughs) Complete chaos ensued. Um, But that's actually a question I wanted to ask you uh, just real quick before we get to Spark stuff. Yeah. Do you think roster expansion is preferable to like league expansion or just more feasible? So I, I've been personally on the train of roster expansion. Like, uh, Hey, cool. New teams are awesome. That's great. But I don't think it solves the problem of one, there not being enough spots for enough players Two these sorts of injury issues where we're talking about with Kia Vaughn, for example, I mean, Kia nurse, like her injury has now caused a chain where it's like, there's two players that might get released because of her one injury. Um, So I think it would take, it would relieve a lot of that stress and it would relieve a lot of the developmental stress of like, we can pick a third round player and keep them, keep her on the roster. um, If we have, you know, 15 spots rather than 12, because 12 spots, you're going to probably need everyone to at least be able to play. So it gives a little bit more development. So yeah, I'm, I'm for roster expansion. I know a lot of people, and I, I don't know where you stand on this, but I know a lot of people want league expansion. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm all for the roster. I'm definitely more in favor of league expansion just because one, I think it adds more spots. It does. Like simultaneously. And then two, I just look at all these teams that like by the end of the year when they're like chugging along for the playoffs, mm-hmm. the young players don't get time at all. Like I'm, I'm thinking of like Chelsea Dungey in Dallas, yeah. like how much did we see her? And with a 40 minute game, it's so hard to get 12 players in rotation as is. So I'm, I'm sort of a belief that 12 is fine for 40 minutes. Okay. Um, if you want to like extend the game, like Cheryl Reeve talks about, you know, getting yeah. the 48 minutes, then yeah, why not add more players? But as it stands, I just feel like we wouldn't be able to see any more of the players if we did get roster expansion. No, you're right. And I, I do think it would have to go along with some sort with game expansion, but I don't, I guess that's not going to happen. That is something that I've never, like, it's never once made sense to me why in the WNBA we have 40 minute games. I well, don't everybody know plays 40 minutes other than the NBA. The NBA is weird. Well, but the NBA is the, like, we have to, you know, at this, right? Like the WNBA, we're at the same level as the NBA in terms of the competition Especially level. like that the W is the same as international and, Fair enough. Um, you know, EuroLeague and things like that. I, plus, I like the 40-minute game so much more. Um, it's true. Better. It's better. It is better. But it's like, I don't know. I do, I do want to see. I just want to see it one-to-one, right? I want to be able to say, hey, this person's shooting whatever as compared to someone else. As, so, as people who are in both both leagues Mm -hmm. like fan wise i just want to be able to compare it really easily but i get it i think you're right probably the 40 minute the 40 minute as long as we get something something that adds more wmba Mm -hmm. basketball i will support it yeah and there's like i mean we could talk about athletes unlimited probably at the end we got we got a lot more free agency Mm -hmm. stuff to talk about but i i kind of want to see how that works out too because there's some players that i'm I'm interested in so more women's basketball at the pro level Mm -hmm. seems great especially on u.s soil because I can't keep track of when the Euro League games are. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Have you watched any of this year? I, I watch actually a lot on YouTube. Oh, okay. um, it's it's pretty good. I So for me, it's pretty early in the morning. So I can like do it like before I start my other work, so to speak. Right. Um, but I can understand if you're on the East Coast, it's like just like smack in the middle of the day and like not very useful. I'm usually sitting here talking into a microphone <laughs> when those games are happening. So it's a, it's a little difficult. Uh, to watch it, but it, 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 I like Euroleague. It's just, and it's super accessible. I'll give them that. 
the yeah. the YouTube. But I'm, I'm with you. Like American soil games are just by definition more accessible. Or the other thing that Stu Bird's been on, let's put the WNBA season in basketball season. I don't, I, I like the summer in terms of, you know, we have our own time and all that, but I want, I'd like it to be in at least some of the fall. for that um, format. Yeah. That's why we need to go. That's why we need to get more arenas too. And yeah. the, the dream have one. Uh, but even the, the dream, they share theirs with the Atlanta Hawks G league team. That's true. And yeah. so do the, and so do the mystics. They have their own arena, but share with the right. G league team for the go-go, I believe. I like the summer. I think like if soccer can have the summer and everyone pays attention, I think that, you know, basketball can have the summer too, but these are all the things that we did not decide to talk about. in addition to sports We just got downhill with the changes we've made to the league. Let's, <laughs> let's get to the changes we'd make to the Los Angeles sparks. Mm-hmm. The main reason I guess you came on to this podcast, <laughs> I suppose. Um, and I, the question I had was who is more stuck phoenix or los angeles we've all, we've laid out all the reasons why phoenix is super stuck why why do you think los angeles is also in a similar position of, of being stuck with the roster well just like salary cap wise they've already given out their six protected contracts mm-hmm. um i would gather that at least three of them are not positive value contracts at this point so that puts the sparks in a little bit of a bind and among their unprotected contracts it's literally the the youth, like the core of the team, I can't imagine mm. them wanting to deal Brittany Sykes or Jasmine Walker or Rella Garantes, right? Like mm-hmm. there's just no sense in moving on from any of those players, considering how well Sykes performed last year and just how invested they are in this rangy wing movement that Fisher's trying to do in that post Candace Parker, Chelsea Gray era. So they just have so many things already committed on their cap sheet, which makes it hard to imagine that they have a lot of maneuverability, but at the same time, like I think they might have a little more flexibility than Phoenix just because even though their money is committed, it's committed in like smaller chunks, which I think right. are more movable than like Bria Hartley. Right. No, for sure. And, and I mean, the people you're talking about here are Chanae, the mm-hmm. Amanda Zowie B, Gabby Williams, Erica Wheeler. Chris, oh wait, is Gabby, uh, Gabby's protected too. Gabby's right? protected. Yeah. They gave yeah. her an extension immediately upon the trade that brought her in from Chicago last year. Right. So she's, so that's, Three of them. We got Erica Wheeler. Like unseen protected contract. <laughs> See how that works. All that. I, I do really like Gabby Williams. I think yeah. that's going to be a fine deal. And she she played well last year in her international games. But um, it, I think that one's fine. But then we got Erica Wheeler, Christy Tolliver, and Neka Gumake. Uh, Neka's, Neka's the, the cornerstone. So I don't think we need to talk much about her. But I think everyone else, like you're mentioning, those are movable contracts. And I think the big domino, though, that has to kind of fall is like Weller, Cheney is coming back or what she's going to like, how committed is she going to be to playing the season? She was there last year. She was just hurt Mm -hmm. for big chunks of the season. Right. But she, she did show up. So if she shows up, it becomes extremely difficult to fit everyone else in that they want to keep, I think. Yeah. And when I talked to Chanae back in November, I guess she was Mm -hmm. hundred percent focused on coming back. So I would be the goal I'm assuming unless there is some sort of setback in terms of a preparation I would assume that she is planning on coming back which just makes some really weird roster balance issues because Chanae's a center mm-hmm. NECA is more of a power forward but also big Amanda Zowie B is a center Lauren Cox is a center um so what, what are you planning to do with three centers while you're trying to play this switchy like fast break system uh doesn't make a ton of sense to me uh, I will say that the Amanda Zawagi contract was probably the most confusing of last year's off season. Yeah. Just did not make a ton of sense. And while it was great to have Zawi around when they suffered all of those other injuries, there was, Oh my God, I didn't even mention Maria, the diva, another potential center who could come over. Um, it was great to have her around when nobody else was available. I just don't know what role she fits on a healthy version of the Sparks. Yeah. And I don't, I don't see much of a fit there with, with the entire idea that you're talking about, which is part of the reason why this offense was, we'll say bad. miserable, miserable. <laughs> it was miserable. It was worse than bad. There's bad. And then there was the Los Angeles Sparks oh, man. Uh, offense from last season. So. Yeah. My co-host on the step through Evan Gualberto likes mm-hmm. to talk about um, like windshield wiper plays, like when uh, the ball just gets turned over back and forth and like yeah. immediately like just switches sides of the court. Like that happened a lot with the sparks. They forced so many turnovers. Like 
at the perimeter. It's a remarkable strength of their defense, but then they would also just give it right back. <laughs> yes. They were, uh, I think, let, let's see, the offensive rating was 90.5 last season, 12th, obviously. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, the defense was great, and Evan is a great follow on Twitter, if anyone. I'm guessing most people who listen to this particular podcast probably already follow Evan. Well, you should follow Evan because he clips things during games and makes it very helpful to follow along. It, it, it teaches you a lot about basketball, and uh, mm-hmm. most of the stuff I say on most of my podcasts come from either him or, like, Nikias or someone on Twitter. I'm just repeating. Um so I would go follow him, but uh, on the Sparts, that is really true. The the windshield wiper idea of like we're just passing the ball around in the perimeter, and again, this doesn't make a lot of sense because this team has like eight million centers to use at any given time. Mm-hmm. Um, so they they do need a lot of tweaking. Maybe there's a trade that can happen here. Uh, you're not moving NECA. Correct. You're probably not moving NECA. You're not. You're not moving NECA. Okay. Because I'll stop. I'll stop. Yeah. They're not moving that guy, which means you're not moving Chanae. So if Chanae wants to come back, she so come back. Uh, then you got, then you have the rest of these contracts. You're not moving Gabby Williams, just traded for her. So everyone else here is probably on the block. So Tolliver, Wheeler, Zowie B. Mm-hmm. In terms of just from the Sparks perspective, before we get into what their value is, which one of those three do you think would be the one they would like to trade the most? I would think Zowie. Zowie. Um, Eric Wheeler was actually pretty good for the mm-hmm. Sparks last year. Um, didn't make the, you know, ballot for the All-Star game, but <laughs> hey, I thought she was pretty decent. Um, really good pick and roll operator. Definitely gets swallowed up when they you can put a big guard on mm-hmm. her, uh, which we saw most notably against Connecticut, but Connecticut gives everybody problems. So that's like, you know, neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I think Erica Wheeler and Tolliver, well, Tolliver, they went 10 and nine with her in the lineup last year. So if she had been healthy longer, she had this like fluke eye injury that kept her out of the end of the season. Yeah, that was weird. And, you know, just the spacing that she provides, like one quality shooter on the Sparks lineup makes a world of difference. Uh, So I think, yeah, Zowie is the one they'd want to move because just the glut of options at center. And I'm not sure that she does enough like for their weaknesses, like rebounding wasn't good enough there. Um, And then just being able to come out and guard on the perimeter, they have more faith in their other, other options than Zowie. And that'd be huge to move Zowie B because that's $139,000 of cap space that they can immediately use to bring back Nia Coffee, which is probably their biggest, their biggest <laughs> goal. And I will, I will apologize for not sending Nia Coffee back to LA <laughs> during the mock off season, <laughs> sent her to Indiana for a bunch of different reasons that made sense then. And then when I listened back to it, I was like, I don't think she, I don't think she'd do that. Um, but the thing is, she she may price herself out of the market if they don't get a trade done for mm-hmm. Zowie B. Because as it stands right now, or I mean, sorry, for any of these players, it doesn't it's not necessarily Zowie B. Right. Any, any of these players, if they keep their roster as is, it's going to be really hard to keep Coffee on roster. I mean, right now they they have without including you know Lauren Cox. Let me put it. Let me put him in. I'll put Lauren Cox and Tay Cooper's numbers in, mm-hmm. and we have we we don't have enough to sign Nia Coffee. So right. you're choosing between Cox and coffee. And then it's like, even if you cut Cox in favor of coffee, you may not get her if she, cause she's unrestricted free agent. Right. Yeah. I just think that she was so perfect for the way they wanted to play because she likes to run in transition. She's super active on defense. She can play up and down. Like you can mm-hmm. put her on wings, you can put her on bigs and she like does those help side rotations really well. She did a great season, like statistically speaking from blocks. Um, yeah. And like the three ball was working. Um, I would like to see her make better decisions in transition. That was a uh, theme as a whole with the sparks, but you know, (laughs) kind of everything. Um, But yeah, I just think that a player of her size is so valuable because of all of the different roles they can play on the court. And I do think that her, like the fact that she had this breakout season in Los Angeles, like she came in on a training contract, like they cleared space for her, right. They got rid of Sydney Mm -hmm. Lee's. Simone Augustus decides to retire and specifically says like, I'm looking at players like Nia Coffey and Bria Holmes and seeing like how they're at the beginning of their careers. And I want to make a space for them. Um, so it seems to me that she would be a priority. I've been going back and forth in my head as to whether they would cut Brittany Sykes to get the money to keep her around. Like if no trades with the protected contracts right. materialize, I think that might be a bridge too far because Brittany is again, just the kind of player that Fisher wants in his system. Mm-hmm. But like if it were me, I think I would do that, but I'm not there for sure. So 
so the thing with Brittany Sykes though, is that she's such a positive value contract. Like, I don't think you cut her. You like there, there is someone who will trade for her at $113,000 a year. Yeah. I, I tried to move her like, and oh. during the mock off season and Richard was being just really obnoxious about it. <laughs> Him Never. did not treat it like a positive contract. <laughs> <laughs> But it is a, it, it's a super value contract. I mean, well, on one side of the ball, that's and I think that's kind of the issue with the Sparks. And that's why I think the like that idea of potentially moving Sykes is a good one because there's not there's just no offensive dynamo here, right. especially when Tolliver's hurt. And I think one of the reasons they were better when Tolliver was around was just like we get laid in the shot clock. Well, throw it to Christy. She'll figure out some crap. Mm-hmm. It'll probably be a bad shot, but she makes. Or at some. least you can play like four on four and reduce some of the cramp spacing because someone right. is attached to her. Um, and the problem with like Sykes, she was like quite good offensively in the 2020 bubble, yeah. um, and then it just all fell apart. Like even the free throw shooting took a dive last year, which is really the problem because she's good at getting to the hoop and drawing fouls. And if that's not leading to points, then really what's happening? So I. I'm kind of with you there. Like they, they do need just some impetus on the offensive side of the wall. And if like, that means having to unload Brittany, which I believe they could get something of value for her like that, you know, she seems like a player who you could plug in right away on a contending team, but I don't know. I, I would be prioritizing like the, the coffee sized players. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The way the wings, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it's, it is really difficult. Cause I don't see, I just don't see the sort of offensive player like the offensive minded player that can come in and create shots for themselves and others that doesn't really exist on the market at the moment in terms of that, on that wing side of things. Um, I mean, Brianna Stewart's available, right? <laughs> and Brianna Stewart is technically available. Super is technically available. Give her a call. Uh, I mean, but really though, like you call Jordan Canada. I don't think Jordan Canada solves any of these issues, right? Right. I mean, she seems like such a Sparks player, but like for the wrong reasons. Yeah, they, they already have so many Sparks players. Like, yeah, get more, more Jordan Canada's on this team. Maybe she'll want to join Phoenix after they hire Vanessa Nygaard. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see, we'll see if <laughs> if Phoenix hires a head coach that could potentially put a dent in some some of these free agents. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe like. I, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna say like Odyssey Sims, like Courtney Williams. Like oh, Odyssey Sims, it ended badly in Los Angeles. I, I don't think that's the route we're gonna go again. <laughs> was that during the Fisher? It was right before. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a new thing. Like no one, no one remembers any of that. I don't even think. Is there anyone around from the organization when Sims left? Neca, that's it. No, that's it. And Neca's great. Who could be mad at Neca? And I guess Christy kind of. All oh, right. Yeah, but she was. She it, left and came back. Yeah. Right. 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 Right, but that's so. There's no one to blame here. All the people got fired that that did that to Odyssey Sims. So maybe Odyssey Sims, and Courtney Williams could come in, but I don't see I don't see the great. Fit. I like the Courtney Williams fit okay. actually because she is like, um, what's the word I want to look for? Like spicy enough on defense, you know, like where <laughs> like that punches above her weight there, but um, just the money. I don't think it's coming. She's gonna demand. I don't know how much the whole fight thing is going to depress her market because I think she's really good. Yeah. I, it, she has to be, I don't know. I feel like it will affect things because it's not just the, it's not getting in a fight to me, you know, it's like, posting hey, look, it on YouTube. yeah, like, look, people get into fights. You shouldn't do it. It's pretty easy to avoid, but if you're a certain type of person, I get it. You can get in a fight. That's not a big deal. It's post like having to tell the team about it. And then posting it on YouTube after telling the team that wasn't your fault to talk, just go on YouTube and get, I don't even know how many views. I hope it was a lot of views and then implicate your teammate. Like, I don't know. To me, I'd be like, I'm not signing her unless we really, really need to. I could see it. I could see it in LA if they had the money. Um, Cause she can get her own shot. Like if you, I mean, I just don't see the point because you can't play her next to Tolliver. Exactly. Uh, unless like you get rid of Wheeler and then that's your backcourt is Tolliver and Williams, but I don't know where the money shakes up. And, and so, all right. So we're, t- I think we're talking, I mean, we're talking about the little moves on the, per- the, the periphery really, but I just don't, I don't know. What's your, what's your idea on like, how does this team get to being a championship contender? Like I don't see a path at the moment. For yeah. them to go where they so, are to championship contender. The, the championship contender is not happening this year. Like, okay. let's just put that on the table. Unless, yeah. unless Brianna Stewart signs with the Los Angeles Sparks, like it's not happening. 
No, they can't afford her. So. Yeah, they, they just clear a lot. You know, Bernie Sykes' value contract, right? Like, there's some picks <laughs> to get rid of Zowie. Um, but yeah, the championship contender thing is not happening. They were very close to making the playoffs last year, right? You win that last game against Dallas, you're in the playoffs. Like I said, 10 and 9 with uh, Tolliver in the lineup. Mm-hmm. I think like one game under 500 with neck on the lineup, you make an argument like better health. This is already a playoff team. And like Jasmine Walker fits into that. Gabby Williams, like those are better players than Bria Holmes and Carly Samuelson last year. Like there's already an improvement there. And other than the Ogulma case, like, I don't think anybody's on the wrong side of the Asian curve. So I think there is reason to believe in. And Tolliver. Internal improvement. Yeah. Uh, Tolliver. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but like all of their young players, I would imagine could just get like, you know, incrementally better. And that results in like more of a coherent process. They also just change so much of their roster from mm-hmm. 20 to 21 that like the offense was always going to be a problem, frankly, because there was just no continuity whatsoever. So I think if they bring back coffee, like somehow mm-hmm. and, you know, find like one other spacer, uh, like you, you don't keep Cooper, you don't keep Cox. Like, uh, I don't know who that is because shooting always like gets paid premium, but, um, I was just Becca Allen's an unrestricted free agent, right? I was about to say Becca Allen. You're looking yeah, at the Becca if, Allen's or Sophie Cunningham. Do that like, uh, something like in that range, there's like a very clear path to the playoffs, I think. Um, and that would be obviously an improvement from year to year. So I, I don't think they're looking to hit a home run in free agency this year. I think it's, okay, well, we set out this two-year plan. You know, we don't obviously want to miss the playoffs again because that's embarrassing, but we think we have enough here to make the playoffs. And once a lot of these bad contracts clear, then maybe we can entice some other people who want to play with Jasmine Walker and Garantes and just these younger players that we have here. Yeah, no, I think, it. I guess just like, is getting to the playoffs going to be good enough for everyone to stick around? Like I- Well, the beauty is that, Derek Fisher is his own boss, so he is going to be sticking around. <laughs> good, good enough for Derek Fisher. I mean, I don't know though, because like it is tough because next year, next year they could really hit the reset button. Next year, Walker and Griantis only players on contract. I'm sure there'll be some contracts given out. This mm-hmm. year they'll go up, go through 2023. And they don't have a first. So <laughs> famously do not have a first round pick at the moment. Um, they could get one in in a trade, potentially for Britney Sykes. Uh, I mean, I got a first when I traded away Chrissy Tolliver in the mock off season. And you had to take back some, some, what, what was it? it was, uh, back Mariah Jefferson. Mariah Jefferson and someone else. Oh, it was just, it was just Jefferson for Tolliver. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's, I think the, the play that they're going to have to make is you got to start to me, at least you got to start rebuilding now. And mm-hmm. they have started it to their credit. Like you mentioned, everyone here is, is younger, um, I would say Wheeler's kind of approaching the point where I'm, I'm getting a little wary. Yeah, yeah. If you could get value for Wheeler, by all means, go for it. Yeah. I think this should be somewhat of a fire sale. And even if you, I think it's, you have to sell NECA on it. That's the person who needs to be involved mainly is, Hey, look, if you want to be here long-term, we got to start tearing this down now so that we can have a championship level team in 23 or 24. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't think you can get rid of NECA because no. she's your face, right? And then if you don't get rid of NECA, you can't get rid of Janae. So there's just like fewer things that you can get rid of. Um, and those are the players that I believe are less attractive in a trade market. So as much as I would love for them to just tear it all up, like their chance was last year. Their chance was like, okay, well, Chelsea and Candace left. Like, let's not sign any old people. And they decided not to do that. <laughs> they went the complete opposite direction. <laughs> the opposite direction. Uh, in fairness, the Tolliver signed after the 2019 season. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yes, they went the complete opposite direction. Now, I mean, I think in part that was because they had told NECA, hey, like, you're going to come back. And I don't know. I don't know. Did they assume, do you think they thought that Candace was coming back and Chelsea was coming back last, last offseason? That was the impression that I got. Um, there was more worry about Chelsea, I think, than Candace. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Yeah, it was a perfect storm of badness. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty. It's a pretty bad look. Yeah. I gotta say, it looks like Chelsea Gray and Candace Parker in the in the same off season. Thank and goodness it, they didn't play each other in the finals. That would have just been really bad. That, and then we were real close um, yeah. to that happening. So it, I don't know. I mean, I, I just think now it's better to do it now when you can at least get some value for some of these players before they're 
whatever value is available, you're going to have to get it now because next year everyone's a free agent and I don't see a lot of these players coming back. And I don't know if you keep your draft pick this year and don't trade it for something stupid, you could potentially have a good draft pick next year. Yeah. I mean, in theory, if we see Jasmine Walker like play to her potential, then Hey, like it was worth making the trade, but also like, could she have been available at 10? Like, did you have to waste that on 70 Watts? Who knows? (laughs) Yeah. And, and it's like in that draft, like Jasmine Walker may have been available even if you hadn't picked her because in the, in the way other teams are constructed in front of them, that player may have been released mid season. And you can just go pick her up instead of mm-hmm. wasting a for your first this year. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, our, our mindset would be a little bit different if they have what pick did they end up getting got the, the fourth. third pick. Did Doesn't they? Dallas have the fourth? No, they have. Oh yeah. They have fourth. They have fourth. So they, they got the, all right. So with the fourth overall pick, I don't know who you're going to get. Maybe like a Lisa or doesn't, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Whatever player you can sell and say, Hey, here's the future. I yeah. think it, it looks a lot better. And now you're just kind of stuck with this very veteran laden team. that's not going to be around. Yeah. They're just treating Jasmine Walker as a rookie this year. Cause she was hurt all yeah. last year. Yeah. No, and she is. And it, it, she could be really good. I mean, her shooting in college was unbelievable. If she, if her shooting's real it, at the pro level and she's healthy, that is that could be somewhat of a game changer, but she'd have to prove to be like a starter essentially for this to matter. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that's uh, that's necessarily something you want. Will she be able to get in front of all of those other front court players that we mentioned earlier? <laughs> so you also you mentioned the last thing I want to bring up with the Sparks because n- now we're getting into like sad territory of where I'm just like I don't know what else to, I don't know what else to do. It with happens on our WWE podcast with me and Evan. We have to like. <laughs> just cut it down at a certain segment <laughs> <laughs> we we don't cut down anything although we do have everything under now uh cooper you mentioned that she's you don't think she's gonna come back or oh no i just said that like if you needed the money that's where i think it would come from uh, i not the biggest taya cooper fan okay uh i do think she provides something defensively her finishing around the rim just drives me up a wall but, and the shooting, I don't think is real. And it, like she shot decently her rookie season and like not well last year. Uh, so when you already have so many players who can't shoot, it's really hard to stomach that at your point guard position. Mm-hmm. And then I also think she's just a little too small for like the backcourt that you already have, right? Like they were starting games with her Wheeler and Tolliver at certain points. And like, they're just asking for a loss. Like yes. it literally was like, we would see the starting lineup. And like, there was a joke among the sports be like, oh, Fisher's not trying to win today. <laughs> like that's, that's the goal here. Um, so I'm just not sure I see a fit with this team, which shouldn't be the calculus by any means, because she's younger and like, you want to think forward. I just, I don't think she's good enough offensively to be your point guard engine. And considering all of the other pieces that you have, like you kind of need to just get one good shot creator to make life easier on everybody else. Like it's going to be so hard to chart the development of their other wings. If nobody's able to create shots for them. Right. No, I agree with that. Would you put, uh, would you put Cox ahead of her in terms? Just like that, I know we have like a million centers on this roster. Yeah, yeah. But just like in terms of a developmental prospect from what you saw last year, would you put Cox ahead of Cooper? That's a good question. Um, I didn't see a ton out of Cox, uh, so probably Cooper ahead of her. Uh, she's also like super marketable, which matters kind of in LA. Yeah. Um, so I think I'd probably put Taya ahead of Lauren Cox. Hey, yeah, and Laura Cox also has her, you know, marketability definitely just from her college days. Like she's mm-hmm. she's very known. But yeah, I, were they I, on I, the same Baylor team? Were they on the same Baylor team? I'll look it up. Maybe I'm wrong, but <laughs> I know she played. No, I, I don't. So 2019, 2020. Yeah, yeah, that would be yeah. this. That'd be the same Baylor team with Lauren Cox. I thought it was reverse. Thought she started at Baylor mm-hmm. and ended up somewhere else. She Taya played nice. for some just remarkably good college teams. But she the fact played. that you played for so many of them is a little bit of cause for concern. <laughs> <laughs> she played for Tennessee, South Carolina, and Baylor. It is, I don't know. I don't know how much of a concern that is. I, it's kind of cool when you think about it because it kind of shows like, hey, this person's at least adaptable to new circumstances. But for example, I, the Miami men's team has a guy who's been on, this is his sixth school. What? Yeah. Charlie Moore has Man, been on transfer rules have gotten out of hand <laughs> are, we, are we going back uh, in my day in my day talk now have we gotten to that point of the sparks podcast uh yeah so i i think cooper though i i would go with her in terms of in those two just because i'm always going to choose the backcourt player for the most part 
Yeah, but if you get like a, a shooter who wants to come to LA, I say get rid of both of them. Yeah, I wonder, can they do, let me, let me tell you if they can do that because they still need minimum roster spots. Yeah. And those two have a really low quality, like you need to have- I would love for them to like use their second round pick this year on just like a spacer. Um, because like I mentioned Carly Samuelson earlier, how I, I think that the players they have this year will be better than her. The roster just like, unclogged like the, the the rotation just like unclogged when she was there like you could just mm-hmm. see like oh my god like any amount of shooting just does wonders for this offense which is why i was so confused when they traded sydney mason in the offseason but um, sydney was here and I, I really enjoy her but she was her she was not good for the mystics not at all um, but she has work. been good for the sparks so it, it was a it was a rough watch with her so i'm not sure she would have fixed the problems last year but yeah no i agree she, she i does. wonder if a reunion can be in the cards now that uh she realizes what life outside of los angeles looks like well i'm really she should have succeeded like in theory the theory of sydney weiss and right the, i thought they did a nice thing getting her into that spot in washington like it seemed like a good place for her to do well and it just did not work out let me see is she uh what is she she's unrestricted or no she's she's under contract she's got a contract but it's unprotected so well, washington does not have a ton of room right you just wonder what they would want to do with it uh yeah, eighty two thousand. It's a little bit more. It just depends though, because like, if they only bring back Mayshawn Allen, not to make this a Mystics podcast, yeah. but if they're only bringing back Mayshawn Allen, like they do have enough space to keep her on. Yeah. There's there's potential there, um. But if she does get released, yeah, I think the first place she'd go, she'd call is uh Los Angeles if they have room. Either that or her home in Phoenix, maybe to be a head coach, <laughs> <laughs> player coach, Sydney Weiss. Sure, line her up. Fire up. Uh, to the to the point though about second round shooters, Asia Shepherd, Virginia Tech. I have her in the first round, but I think a lot of people have her in the second round. So that's that's one of the players I think would work. Um, that that mold of just player who can shoot in some regard, get her on there. How many second round picks do they have this year? Three. Oh great. Well, three seconds make a first, as everyone knows. <laughs> Well, maybe with more roster spots, they would. <laughs> um, one thing, though, we should talk about, just with LA, because this comes up very often, is Liz Campage. Mm. Um, so she's a she, unrestricted free agent. She did not get cored by Las Vegas, which surprised some people. It didn't surprise me. I, I didn't think that was going to happen. We're going to assume for this podcast that she's playing in the WNBA. Okay. We I talked with uh, Richard Cohen. He said that she, he laid out all the reasons why she probably – she may not play. Mm-hmm. Um, assuming she does play. I don't think like there's just not that many landing spots that make sense. So LA comes about because it's LA. She's expressed interest in LA. They could hypothetically, I guess, in some realm, clear enough cap space to bring her in. If all of that happens, how would you feel about Liz coming on this particular like Sparks team? I like Liz. I mean, she's better than anybody else on the team. So that's, you know, a good place to start just from a talent perspective. Uh, It's obviously not a long-term commitment with Liz. So you don't have to worry about setting back. I mean, depending on like what you have to do to clear the cap space, obviously, but her, her salary, I don't think is going to be hampering your books for many years to come just because I don't think she's in that place where she wants to sign a multi-year deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I mean, I don't think she solves like the spacing concerns because obviously we saw in Vegas that despite the theory of Liz King Bages as a shooter, it didn't quite work out that way. But I just um, think like, she's just so much better than what they have. Like as an offensive hub, you know, she could be fairly successful. I so I don't think we're we're shutting the door on Liz King Bages as a shooter, just because Bill Lambeer probably didn't believe in Liz King Bages as a shooter. So and he I don't think he believes in anyone. The yeah. shooter. But the if Fish is, is willing to let Amanda Zowie B be a shooter, then he's definitely willing to let Liz Kane Beige be a shooter. So that's what I was going to ask. Like, like she just kind of steps into Amanda Zowie B's role and is better Amanda Zowie B. No offense Correct. to Amanda Zowie B. Correct. <laughs> Which is, used uh, to be reffed by the same agent. No longer the case. <laughs> right. Oh, right. Liz also does not have an agent. Um, at the Well, I don't know if she has an agent. We haven't heard anything since she fired her agent. There was also, did you see the picture? Was it a firing or just like a parting of ways? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever people want to say. She does not have the agent that she had before. Um, Who is based in Los Angeles? Let's know. That's uh, Allison Gall- Gallery, right? Allison Gallery, yeah. Gallery, yeah. 
um she she's i guess she's not rep there anywhere i don't know and that was like the start of the agency too is when she got on but regardless did you see the picture of her that was on twitter the other day uh the the dc one the dc one that's not in dc <laughs> i got duped by it i live in dc i was like driving around i was like there's no way there's that much snow on the ground anywhere in washington dc for her to take this picture i like go i was like looking at the weather in gaithersburg because there's, oh, there's a big uh six sports which is a big agency is mm-hmm. in gaithersburg balance like wait there's not that much snow on the ground there why would she come to the agency if they're trying to pitch her so i'm telling you guys right now she was not in dc i don't know where she was but she was not in dc yeah i'm with you i don't see a lot of good fits for her around the league because like i mean like she's not going to want to play for kurt miller um if she doesn't go back to Vegas, like, I don't think the relationship with her and Sandy is great. Uh, Probably not. Or New York, right? Which, like, fit-wise, I think makes a lot of sense for her. Um, is Seattle going to spend money on her? Like, that doesn't so, really make sense to me, but I guess... Seattle has it. Yeah, if you decide, like, we don't want Mercedes Russell, we want Liz Cambage, I just wonder why you would disturb, like, this perfectly crafted chemistry that you have. Uh for Subaru's final season, um, <laughs> just seems like a lot to introduce into the mix. Yeah, no, I agree. I think they would they would rather go after someone like a Tina Charles if they're going the route of bringing in a, a another star to, yeah. assumedly Lloyd, Bird, and Stewart. Lloyd was cored. Uh, Bird's obviously not going to come back to a different team, mm-hmm. and it seems like Stewie's coming back. So with those three in the fold. It doesn't, it makes sense on court, but she, A, Cambage have to take a small discount. Right. I don't know how small, because it would depend on the discount that Sue Bird is taking. And a smaller role, like offensively. But she did that with, with Vegas to a certain extent. Was she um, happy about it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, like when she got there, I guess it was not, Asia wasn't quite the superstar that she is now. Right. She was just rookie of the year, Asia. No. Mm. I don't know. The only, so the only other place I have on this list, because I, I had Seattle, uh, and as you mentioned, I don't think the juju, like, you don't want to mess with the feng shui. Don't mm-hmm. move the, if you like the living room, don't change it. Um, Seattle, New York, as you mentioned, could be potential problems with the head coach. And I don't, like, that would kind of go against the entire ethos of the Jonathan Cobb, New York Liberty experiment at the moment. I don't, I don't know. They I mean, did firewall. To me, the Jonathan Cobb ethos is also like, let's get talent in here. <laughs> which, it, which it would work out with the whole, I just don't, I just think that's like, uh, I don't know. Like you, you got a good thing kind of going to New York. Uh, that's another situation where it's like, let's see how this plays out first before. Right. We, there's another, another big element. And then Vegas. Um, so I think it's, we've come down on, on this podcast to Atlanta and Vegas. Atlanta just makes sense because they have a ton of cap space. They're in a big city. They could give her, they could give Liz whatever she wants in terms of a role. So I, I like the Atlanta fit. I, I think. I would assume she has a good relationship with Dan Padover too, just having been in yeah. Vegas and like these weird off seasons, you know, they've probably had a lot of communication over the past. So. Yes. Which uh, we're, I don't know if that would be legal. I don't think that's legal at the moment. Well, no, it is now. They're allowed to talk to each other. It doesn't seem like free agency has started because again, nothing has happened, but they are allowed to talk. Yeah. I mean, we have, we've had some more reporting. Uh, there was the Raquana Williams snafu and I, I felt, I felt bad for all involved there. Cause that's just, it's a tough break. Uh, are you the one who tweeted like, just imagine reading this with no context. Like Chicago has not offered a contract. <laughs> yeah, to I, I did tweet that, but that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have not offered any, her anything. <laughs> We want to make it very clear we're not in on Raquan Williams. Yeah, another um, player the Sparks lost last offseason. Yeah, and another player that would help the Sparks this offseason, who they cannot afford. Yeah. Sad times. Um, but Atlanta, the, the thing with Atlanta, to get back to Liz campaign, to finish off that thought, like, I just don't, unless they sign a bunch of people, unless they bring in, like, a, you know, Team Charles or whatever, like, I don't see why they would go after Liz Cambage because what are they trying to win this year? Yeah, it, it all depends on Liz's motivation. It's very like, why would she want to come to LA if she's trying to win? All due respect, it sparks. Like, if you want to win, there's other opportunities. Um, it's LA though. Yeah, that that's me. You know, why I, I think the Sparks are a more logical destination than Dream because, like, it's, it's Atlanta. It's not like 
It's not LA. <laughs> There's stars on the jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> she, she could be in a Marvel movie if she goes to Atlanta. <laughs> That actually, I would be all in on, on Liz Camp. Actually, I have a good role for her based on the comics. I should write about that before. <laughs> um, but Atlanta, so Atlanta makes some sense. But yeah, I think it's it's going to be Vegas, um, just because I don't see another place that makes sense. However, I would like to see Atlanta just take salary dumps and acquire assets. Yeah. That's what I would like to see instead of going after high profile free agents. The thing is, I don't know what like who are they going to get assets from other than LA, as we as we talked about at length. Phoenix. Like, Phoenix, though, I mean, they don't have a first round pick this year. They have their first round pick next year. That could be an interesting pickup, but I don't see a salary dump that they need because they don't Are have you any. Are going to play Bria Hartley, Aaron McDonald, Kennedy Carter together? <laughs> Why not? I mean, for Atlanta, who cares? If, if, but I don't, I don't, I just don't think, I don't think Phoenix is even trying to get rid of Bria Hartley because, you know, that, that's like a, a reputational thing is like, hey, we signed you. You, you played great the first season and you got hurt. Like it would yeah. be really, that's true. Be really like, skeezy to just let her to trade her now especially i don't know if it's skeezy like it's hey we need to balance our roster you know with like different positions yeah but you knew this was gonna they knew there was this was gonna happen like nothing's changed for them you know it's not like a situation where it's like oh we lost candace parker and chelsea gray (laughs) now we have to we have to we lost we lost we lost the player that we brought in after you to replace (laughs) you when you were hurt yes It's a, I just think it's a, it's, it's not something it's, that's uh, it's admission of uh, wrongdoing at the very least. I don't know if it's skeezy. <laughs> I, I think it's a, I, if I was the agent, I'd be pretty pissed. Is, well, is this is a role thing. that you know how to occupy. So I will, it's part of your expertise here. I am an expert, I guess. I got plenty of people money. Uh, it was really easy to be an agent in WNBA. It's, it's not a, in terms of the contract negotiation phase. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I'm just trying to see. I'm trying to look for assets that they could take. Maybe from Dallas, they could take. They could take a uh, Mariah Jefferson. They ended up in the mock off season taking Isabel Harrison, I believe. Right. They uh, made like a full on consolidation trade there. Dallas did to get Cheyenne Parker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is, I think that could be there. There's somewhere that you could look. But honestly, if I'm Dallas, I kind of like Isabel Harrison over over Cheyenne Parker. I saw her last year and, you know, I, I, I enjoy what she does. I think she fits in pretty well with the idea. So I don't know. I just like for Atlanta, I'm with you. I would love to see them collect assets. I just don't see where those assets are and maybe bringing in, I may, maybe bringing in Liz. I don't know. Maybe Minnesota needs to clear some room. Like whoever signs Liz could clear some room. That's yeah. probably the answer is like, whoever's going to sign Liz is going to, is going to need the room to do it. And they'll have to trade with, in Atlanta, uh, or possibly in Indiana, but I, mm-hmm. uh, we don't have to talk about Indiana, man. That's a, it's a whole mess. They're going to be just hyping up Nia Coffee next year. <laughs> Nia, Co- Nia Coffee coming in, hundred and eighty thousand dollar contract protected <laughs> for the next three years. Uh, I could see that happening. I could see that happening because they're not going to have much more. They did. I don't understand. You should go to Indiana under those terms. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you, if you get that, go ahead, Nia. Uh, no. I, the, the Kaiser Gondrzic thing in Indiana, I don't know if we want to briefly touch on that. That timing was bizarre to me. I still don't understand what happened there. Yeah, so she had uh, expressed that she sat out the second half of the season to work on her mental health, right? Mm-hmm. And then they just cut her. <laughs> like, yeah. The what? shortest press release of all time. <laughs> we, we've cut her. It's like Michael Jordan, like, I'm <laughs> back. Like, that's I'm how back. short it was. She's gone, <laughs> She's period. Gone sense press release i mean all right i get it because like i think to a certain extent it was like well yeah you could have let it like I, i'm not sure she let the team know where she was last year mm. uh, when she left so i could see why they why they would want to move on from her it's just That's... from from like a team building perspective it doesn't make sense to do it now like right like you should wait for all of free agency to transpire like her cap hold is pretty limited you don't have any guaranteed money on the hook for her like it's you're Indiana. <laughs> what are you doing? Like you need. If there's also, a... like it's it's really quick to give up on somebody. She played like what nineteen games? Exactly. If there's a one percent chance that she's a good player, you absolutely have to take it. If you're Indiana, you want to know why? Not though, because they don't believe that there's a one percent chance of Lauren Cox being a good player either. Well, and that's and and I just don't. I don't get like. There's no re. There, there's just no. Um, salary cap reason to do any of these moves i'm just not sure if there's someone in indiana who is keeping track of any of this because like 
They didn't need to release Cox when they did. They don't need. They didn't need to release Gontrzyk when they did. Obviously, those contracts that they gave out last year are as much as I like John T. Lavender and Daniel Robinson. Daniel Robinson was really good last year, but like they're still negative value contracts. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand it, and I think it's it's a terrible look, and it's a bad basketball move. Yep. Uh, I I have nothing to add there. It's agree one hundred percent. Oh, crap. We have five minutes to get to two more things I want to talk about. <laughs> um, Diamond the Shields, uh, as we, we mentioned before the podcast, uh, she has met with like half the league. She says she's probably not coming back to uh, Chicago. This was reported by... Uh, uh, Any Costable, right? There I'm it is. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was trying to think of who it was. Any Costable, Chicago sometimes. She reported uh, that Diamond Shields feeling like she's not coming back to Chicago makes sense given their exotic cap situation. We have to get into all of that, but what was your reaction to that news? And which of the three teams do you think she's narrowed it down to? Let's make predictions. Uh, Atlanta number one. Okay. Um, I don't know what diamond wants. Like, does she want to be a lead ball handler? Uh, Cause where are those options coming for her? Uh, I liked, I like how you said it, that she wants to be clear copper. She, she wants to be clear <laughs> copper. Yeah. That's what she wants. Um, I don't know that she is. <laughs> like, the finishing not quite there uh just the decision making not quite there i don't think she's met with washington the fit doesn't make a lot of sense to me there because she can't shoot um where else could she be meeting i could definitely see Derek fisher giving her a meeting i can't imagine that that's one of her top three choices oh. though um, <laughs> so uh, many sparks qualities in diamond issues <laughs> i was about to say this is 100 percent of sparks play. Yeah, bring in her and jordan canada Run it definitely back. one of the six teams i'm 100 percent sure I don't think they're a top three finalist. Um, I could see Vegas having interest in her. Yeah. Uh, just adding a little bit of like dribble penetration to their offense. Um, so yeah, maybe like Vegas, Atlanta, and I don't know. I'm going to say New York. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'm going to go. So I'm going to Atlanta for sure. I think, mm-hmm. I think ever, that's where she ended up in the mock off season, just for everyone's edification. And so I think Atlanta She's makes from there, right? North Cross High School legend, yeah. her and Jody Meeks, and several other basketball players. But that's <laughs> one I think about with Jody Meeks. Um, so Atlanta for sure, for sure is up there. Um, I don't know, maybe like throw throw Dallas into the mix. Although Dallas is kind of weirdly like hand strung themselves with the the Bell Allery, Bell Allery uh, thing, yeah. You know, them guaranteeing the fourth year options on Bell Allery and Ty Harris, like they're weirdly hand strung. So maybe that one's off, but. Las Vegas makes a ton of sense basketball wise. Um, and, you know, and maybe, maybe she is looking to just continue to be in this sort of good team role so she can eventually become Kalia Copper somewhere. So I don't know. I'll throw in, I'll throw in like Connecticut as a possible destination, but I definitely agree with you. Atlanta's her would be my number one. Yeah. Um, I, I think she wants a place to be able to spread her wings a little bit after being her marginalized a little on chicago and for good reason you know like they won the title they won the title <laughs> no you can't uh, yeah. go. and and so i i definitely agree with you though atlanta would be a great fit um i'd we'll like see. to see her on a good team to see if there's a way for her to you know fit into a broader ecosystem because it didn't quite work out in chicago I'm trying to see minnesota minnesota may have some space although that they don't really have a role for her She'd, yeah. be, she'd be on the bench again. Um, Washington, if they had space, would be a great fit, I think, actually. Even though she doesn't shoot, like, they just kind of need someone that, that can get downhill a little bit more. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I, she would make sense. I just don't think they'll have enough space, depending on, on who they get. And especially if they end up drafting Ryan Howard, then you don't need Diamond the Shields. Oh, I guess the number one pick in Washington. I forgot about that. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm excited. I haven't been able to do like much draft prep as a, as a mystics mainly <laughs> reporter uh, in the past few years. So it's exciting to get the number one pick. Um, all right. Last thing, Courtney Vandersloot taking meetings elsewhere. It's a thing. We don't know where she's taking meetings yet. Right. That hasn't been reported, mm-hmm. um, but she's taking meetings to a certain extent, I think she's getting intel on other teams to bring back to the sky. But is it something? Is it nothing? Like, could Courtney Vandersloot be on the move? I think it's nothing. I think okay. this is Courtney Vandersloot being an unrestricted free agent for the first time. And she told Chicago, right, she wanted to be in free agency, right? She wanted mm-hmm. to experience it. It's just like a matter of being wooed, right? Like, yeah. I think players enjoy the like the visits, right? I mean, I, I've seen a lot of the, the Vegas ones. They really 
cam it up for the players. So uh, I just think it's a fun time to meet in free agency. And like you said, her being a mole is actually quite interesting. I'd forgotten about that potential angle. Um, I remember Dwayne Wade doing that for Pat Riley back in the day. But- <laughs> no, that's where we got the idea, baby. Um, Involving Chicago. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's anything. I think she and Allie are coming back to Chicago. I think they're going to run it back. And I apologize for not providing more salacious content here, but that's my opinion. <laughs> we can we can very briefly fantasize about Courtney Vandersloot and Sue Bird in the same backcourt in Seattle. The the amount of passing talent there is insane. <laughs> I would I'd love to see it though, because like we could then see Courtney Vandersloot like mainly looking for her shot. Although I mean she's still on the team with Lloyd and Stewart in this fake world. That's not happening. It's not happening. But it'd be Courtney Vandersloot. It'd be shooter. great. <laughs> The shooter, like I, she I, just I, signs a one year deal and then Allie retires and Sue Bird retires and then she goes back to Seattle with all of the knowledge that she has from this year's meeting. Oh, maybe it could. It, it stranger things have happened, but I don't, <laughs> I'm with you. I don't think it's anything. I keep, think Courtney Vandersloot is coming back to Chicago, and uh, that's about all I got on the docket today. Um, oh, we didn't get to talk about our, our anti US WNBA coaching staff. The, right. the, the Russia coaching staff that we briefly talked about on Twitter yesterday with Becky Hammond, insert Phoenix head coach, Marianne Stanley, Derek Fisher, and Tanisha Wright yeah. uh, coaching the Russian team. Becky, Becky's a citizen to coach against the she other is, five. Yeah, that's why it was the first country that came to mind for me. So it would be, I mean, we could have a, the whole tournament, Canada, Australia, Team USA, and then the Russia coaching staff with all four WM, that would be all 12 WME coaches. Yeah, I want to, I want Derek Fisher could finally coach Maria Vadiva again. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna have to play her at the two next year. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, she can probably so shoot better than any of the two guards. <laughs> she can. Actually, that's a really okay. We'll talk about. Maria I Vidiva. fantasize about the five wing lineup. Like I want to see Garantes, Coffee, Gabby Williams, Jasmine Walker, and Brittany Sykes together. That's what I want at some point next season. Well, uh, I assure you that probably will not happen, just because we've said it now on this podcast. <laughs> And because of that, one of these players will be traded, assuredly. Um, so, Sabrina, I, I, do you have anything else that we should talk about? Did I miss anything? No, I, I, that's that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything coming on, coming down the pike that we should be keeping our eye out? I have some stuff that I'm not allowed to talk oh, about okay. yet. Very um, secretive. But uh, Evan and I will be restarting the step through once uh, you know things pick up with WNBA free agency. So keep an eye on that on YouTube. And yeah, I'm on SB Nation. So I'm going to stop there. All right. Well, you can find links down below in the description for everything that Sabrina's doing and all the reports that we mentioned. I think I have all of them in the show sheet. If I don't, I'll find them. And we will talk to you guys next week right here on the Her Hoop Stats podcast.